Hey, what's up guys? Josh here from Attack, and those of you who've been watching this channel for years might have noticed that we've been using a dedicated NAS from Synology for our video production team. We featured it so many times before and it's been the center of our production setup for many years. Now, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, a NAS or a network attached storage is an independent device that houses hard drives and SSDs in order to combine their storage capabilities or create backup redundancies. As the name implies, the NAS is hooked up to your home or office router via a LAN port, preferably the gigabit port for faster transfer speeds. Once attached, any computer or smartphone that's connected to the network are able to access the NAS, either backup files to it, retrieve archives, or even run a number of applications. We've been able to play music, view photos, and watch videos directly from the network storage on our smart TV that's also connected via Wi-Fi. When we started the video department, we used cloud storage like Dropbox to sync up our production assets, transfer files, archive, and backup our video materials. Eventually, storage capacity became a growing concern. So we switched to a NAS as our primary storage facility, and we never looked back. We still use Dropbox once in a while though, but everything is primarily saved on our main NAS system. In fact, the Synology NAS can also be configured to sync with the Dropbox folder, so that's an added bonus. So we started off dual drive base, and then we moved up to four drive base, and only recently upgraded to Synology's DS1621+, Plus, which supports six drives and up to 72 terabytes of storage if we go with the 12 terabyte drives from Seagate, which is the one that we use often for our NAS. We have several of Seagate's Iron Wolf NAS drives, ranging from four terabytes all the way to 12 terabyte drives we've acquired back in 2018. They now have 18 terabyte drives, but we haven't gotten our hands on those, at least not yet. Despite working from home, this setup has proven to be valuable for our remote team. We actually have bigger editing rigs left open and running in our studio office so we can access it via RDP and quickly sync files between that and our NAS and then download the materials at home. That in turn allows everyone else in the team to be able to access the latest updated files for their respective assignments. This DS1621 Plus that we have right now is an incremental upgrade to the previous DS1618 Plus that we've been using for quite a while. It has a faster internal processor and built-in support for two M.2 SSD slots. Here's a quick chart comparison between the two. The DS1621 Plus now uses an AMD Ryzen 1500B, which runs at a maximum of 2.2 GHz with four cores and eight threads. Quite an improvement from the Intel Atom running on the DS1618 Plus. There's actually two and a half years difference between the two, but the design of the chassis is almost exactly the same. The price difference of both isn't that much, so if you're going to pick between the two, the former should be a better deal given the upgrades added to it. The Synology 1621 Plus is now available in online stores like Lazada for a retail price of around 49,000 pesos. Anyway, that's all we wanted to talk about our NAS setup and how we use it for our video production team. Do you guys use a similar setup? Let us know in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any more future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Josh, stay safe, and I will see you guys in the next one.